For the first time in decades, Virginia bars and restaurants can finally advertise happy hour. It's the latest in a number of recent victories that make it easier to enjoy your favorite drink. In 2019, we also saw the repeal of a law that banned distilling spirits on Native American lands, and a Supreme Court decision that could open up alcohol sales across state lines. The recent reforms we've seen in places like Virginia with their happy hour laws uh, may seem small, but they are slowly pointing us towards a better boozy future. We asked R Street's resident alcohol law expert, Jared Dieterle, about some of the most nonsensical alcohol laws. There's still a lot of uh, dumb alcohol laws in the books today, and uh, here's five examples of them. In North Carolina, good luck getting a cheap drink with buddies after work. North Carolina doesn't have happy hour at all. I like to call them sad hours. Uh, you can get food specials, so you can get discounts on that, but you can't get drink specials, which is what everyone associates happy hour with. They also have other you know, weird restrictions like buying your buddies around. If you buy a pitcher of beer, for example, anything that has more than one serving of alcohol, two people have to go to the bar and pay for it. One person can't just pay it and bring it back to the table. So it's a pretty fairly depressing uh, place in North Carolina when it comes five o'clock and you wanna head to the bar. And then there's Utah's Zion Curtain. It requires uh, bartenders basically to stand behind a partition or a wall when they're mixing cocktails. Uh, the Utah legislator tried to reform it and they ended up uh, making it even more complicated. The justification for the law is that they don't want the uh, children uh, or people that are sensitive, I guess, to uh, see cocktails and hard alcohol being mixed together. Um, every other state, of course, you can go into and watch a bartender actually mixing a drink and it's completely fine and, uh, and normal and hurts no one. And in Louisiana, you can't have airplane-sized liquor bottles. Louisiana currently allows 100 milliliter bottles, which are twice the size of the normal airplane bottles, but they still arbitrarily draw a limit on the regular 50 milliliter size ones that we want. I think the theory for it originally is that uh, little liquor bottles are easier for people to conceal. It uh, might allow uh, people that uh, have uh, an addiction issue to overindulge more if they have a small concealable bottle. Of course, a lot of other states have done the opposite and thought that less amounts of alcohol is probably better for people that have an addiction problem. In Indiana, good luck picking up a cold six pack. Their gas stations cannot sell refrigerated beer. They have to leave it at room temperature and it has to be warm. You know, if you're going in, filling up your tank of gas and want to grab a chilled 12 pack, you can't do it, which uh, makes summer barbecues uh, particularly depressing, I'm sure. And the market's actually responded in a fairly clever way, although they probably shouldn't have to, but something that you'll see in gas stations in Indiana now is like chiller bags that they'll fill with ice. Um, apparently they claim to you know, chill the beer in 15 minutes or really quickly. But again, you have to ask yourself, why have we created an arbitrary barrier that forces something like that to even be necessary, whereas it isn't in other states. And finally, in some states, government stores are the only place to get your favorite bottle of bourbon. So places like Virginia, ABC stores, you actually actually have to go to a retail store run by the government of Virginia to be able to buy your alcohol. People should care because it limits their choices. Uh, and, and it also hurts the producers that are trying to create innovative products. So despite all the progress that's been made in eliminating stupid liquor laws, the rules governing the sector are still often random and absurd. So let's raise a glass to the ongoing fight for liberalizing alcohol sales. Because open markets mean colder, cheaper, and more abundant booze.